her books sit in this kind of like beautiful sadness, like beautiful melancholy, Colin, Megan. <laughs> I stand. I live for it. I'm like I'm fucking living. Like I love it. Let's talk about it. I don't want to. Um. <laughs> Hello everyone. Welcome back to my channel. Today's reading vlog. I am really excited for, but I'm also incredibly nervous for. <laughs> so as you can probably see by the title, today's video. <laughs> we are gonna be investigating, shall we say, investigating with our magnifying glasses. Wait a minute. I'm figuring this out. I'm like Scooby and Shaggy, I'm solving a mystery. Whether these authors that I'm gonna read from are one hit wonder authors for me. These are all authors I have read one book from, only one book in the past, and I gave it five stars. It was like a favorite book. They've all got books that I wanna read, but I'm scared because I feel like there's a lot of pressure when you've read one book from an author and it's five stars and you're like shit where do I go from here? I'm not really saying if I don't like these books there are one hit one down I'm never going to read anything again but I just think the concept of the video is interesting and I'm very I'm very intimidated to read these books. Firstly we're going to be reading The Project by Courtney Summers. So I loved Sadie by Courtney Summers. One of my favourite audiobooks ever. I would super recommend the audiobook for Sadie if you've never read it and this is the project by Courtney Summers. Now this is a five star prediction. I believe it is in my last five star prediction video. I am scared because it hasn't had the best reviews. Are you comfortable? I'm scared. Are you scared? Yeah. You should be. But I think I'm still gonna love it. So basically in this we are following these two sisters. One who joins basically a cult and I believe the other sister is trying to investigate the cult and kind of expose it for what it is to get her sister back. I love cult books. I, I find the concept behind cults. I, I think there needs to be a lot of discussion in books about cults, about like the mental health effects and the abuse that is often suffered in them and like the there's a lot of there's a lot of strange and, and difficult topics that are kind of pushing and pulling against each other when you write about cults. So I think they're very interesting kind of phenomenons to talk about in, in books. Yeah, I just feel like the vibes of this, the kind of eeriness that Courtney Summers writes with, I'm really, really excited, but I'm also terrified. Then we have got We Are Okay by Nina Lacour. A couple months ago, I read and absolutely loved Watch Over Me by Nina LaCour. This was spooky, haunting. It was amazing. It was an amazing book. And I definitely want to read more of Nina LaCour's stuff. So I've picked up We Are Okay. I literally could not tell you what this plot is about. We're going to find out what this book is about together. <laughs> I feel like Nina LaCour's stuff is good to go into them with not much idea of the plot because they're very, very slow and like creeping with how they move. Or at least that's, I mean, I've only read one book. That was how Watch Over Me was. So so I don't really want to know much going into this. And then finally, we are going to be reading Hairpin Bridge by Taylor Adams. Taylor Adams wrote one of my favorite thrillers ever, which is No Exit. This thriller is like <laughs> one of the hardest books to read. I felt sick. I felt awful reading it. Like it was a terrible experience, but I loved it. That is actually painful to watch. But let's go. Hairpin Bridge sounds like it has a similar kind of cat and mouse game to it. We have this girl whose sister killed herself. Oh, we're reading a lot about sisters in this. Her sister killed herself a couple months ago by driving off this bridge with a vague suicide note, but she doesn't believe that's what happened. She goes there to try and figure out the truth, but the um, highway patrolman is, who's the last person to see her sister alive, is like a liar, I think, basically. And I think it's kind of a cat and mouse game between the two of them. I have heard this isn't as amazing as No Exit. I've heard some like kind of mixed things about it, but I'm really, really excited to read it all the same. So yeah, that is what we are gonna be reading in this video. Pretty short books actually, a lot of them. And I'm so excited, but also terrified because <laughs> I want to love all of the books that these authors write. But anyway, I am going to start with the project and I'm just, I just can't wait. I just absolutely can't wait. Just where it was needed Claimed it back as 
weird lapping noises. My cats are washing each other <laughs> just over there. I am 100 pages into the project and you guys, I'm loving it. I'm really loving the writing of this. Like I long have this dream of writing. I just don't do it, but I, I am going to start doing it. But this book is, I just think it's so incredibly well written. Courtney Summers has this way with words, the way that she's explaining feelings and emotions in the most creative, unusual ways. I stand, I live for it. I'm like, I'm fucking living. Like I love it. I've really slowed down how fast I'm reading it. I'm not reading it fast because I've wanted to like sit with the writing and, and the style of writing and really pay attention to it because I'm loving it that much. Like it's so enjoyable. Okay, I turned to a random page. I don't think this is one that I thought that thought on, but it's, it's an example. I've just turned to a random page and it says, my mended bones make themselves known in bad weather in the cold. They feel like a bruise wrapped around a toothache. And do you know what I mean? It's just stuff like that. Hello. The writing is constantly explaining stuff in unusual ways that I really enjoy. So anyway, the plot. We've got two sisters, B and Lo. B is the older sister. When I think in like 2011, Lo is in a car crash with their parents and their parents get killed on impact. And Lo is in hospital for months and months and months. When she leaves the hospital, B joins the project because she believes that the project, this this group with a leader who can supposedly talk to God or, you know, get revelations from God. Um, she believes that they saved Lo. And now we're in the modern day, the present day, with Lo trying to get in contact with B. She hasn't seen her in years and years and trying to kind of expose the project for being a cult because by many they're seen as kind of this charitable organization, but there's a lot of people. People are often like, very isolated away from their families when they join the project. There's obviously some shady shit going on. I can't trust them. It very much reminds me of Far Cry 5. If you don't know, <laughs> Far Cry 5. I don't play video games, but I like watching my boyfriend play them occasionally when the vibes are good. And Far Cry 5 is like this cult game. And I am imagining all of our characters as the characters from Far Cry 5. Best be known. Like, I love that game. The vibes are immaculate. I feel like we're going to get into some good discussions about why people join cults or are members of cults and why they believe in that kind of ideology. Obviously, B was in a very... A very vulnerable place when she joined the project you know she her parents had just died her sister's in hospital i'm gonna go read some more i'll come back to you in a bit but it's really good it reduces stress it alleviates depression i am about 210 pages into the project now i'm still loving it i think this is some of the most interesting characters like collection of characters i've ever read from a lot of like the you know cult allegedly <laughs> allegedly cult members are very interesting and nuanced and they're they're starting to have very interesting relationships with Lo, with the main character and um there's some like shady shit starting to occur and i really don't know what the truth is and where it's gonna go and yeah just the way it keeps enabling you to believe these people and i'm like am i supposed to like is it not gonna be a cult or is it gonna be a cult mm, i know a lot of things but i don't know about that i'm not sure why and I, I think it's a cult. <laughs> How many times can I say cult? But I think it very cleverly is like putting you in the headspace of the characters. I'm really enjoying it. I'm really enjoying it. I don't want to talk to you to be honest. I'm going to go away and finish this book because I'm absolutely loving it. A few moments later. I just read I just read the last two pages again. I just wanna fucking kill myself. <laughs> no, we're not doing this right now. I'm gonna speak to you in the morning. Fuck. I can't look at that again. Bye. Fuck. <laughs> yeah, I feel very attacked! Relax. So uh Hmm. <laughs> okay, hang on. Let me just, I just need to look at the last page again. Fuck, I'm running up. <laughs> so this killed me. The ending of this killed me. I'm giving this book five stars. Can you believe it? Like everyone hasn't really liked this that much, but I loved it. I absolutely loved it. I'm fashion, I'm style. And if they can't keep up, then 
that's their problem. Nice Bye, guys. take Thank care. So it's some of my favorite writing I've ever read. I think like the prose, the language is amazing. I think the character interplays, the character relationships were so fascinating and complex. I, I loved it. Like I just fucking loved it. I just loved it. And the ending, fuck me, like, there's something I want to say, and it is mild spoilers for Sadie and this. It's very mild. Like, I said this to my mum last night, and she hasn't read either of them, and she's going to. So, like, it doesn't completely spoil it, but if, if you are a bit, like, sensitive about knowing, like, the vibe of endings of books, skip ahead. Courtney Summers' books have these endings that are tragic, that are heartbreaking, but there's this little bit of hope there's a little bit, I'm gonna cry. <laughs> there's a little bit of light amongst all the darkness. There's a little bit of, yeah, hope. And that, in a way, makes the heartbreaking stuff worse because it's not just heartbreaking and shut. There's this 1% of hope and that having that hope makes it more heartbreaking. And she does it so well and I've never, I can't think of any other book I've read that's like that and that makes me feel like that. So there we go. That's a spoiler, like the mild spoiler's done, but that that's how those endings make me feel. I just thought it was amazing. I thought the look at, you know, how people can become so caught up in, in cults and how uninsidious they can appear and the layers to it. It was just so interesting. I, I just want to cry, you guys. It was so good. I just need a bit of space if that's okay. <laughs> yeah. yeah. Anyone who gave this three stars, you're wrong. I don't make the rules. I'm sorry you're wrong. You're wrong. You're incorrect. You're incorrect. I'm now gonna start We Are Okay by Nina LaCour. This is super short and so is Hairpin Bridge. I'm tempted. I don't have much else to do that I need to do today other than read these books. So I'm tempted to try and read both of these today. I don't know. We'll see how that goes. I think I'll definitely be able to read We Are Okay and at least part of Hairpin Bridge. I'm expecting something equally emotionally haunting and difficult to read. I'm killing myself with these books. And yeah, I'm gonna go start this. I feel like we look quite cute together. <laughs> Hello, slight change of scenery. <laughs> I'm around my grandparents at the moment, but I am halfway into We Are Okay by Nina LaCour and I'm really enjoying it. So I knew nothing <laughs> about this before starting it. I literally didn't know the plot. Basically we're following Marin, who has kind of like done this disappearing act on everyone, moved to New York to go to university and hasn't been answering her best friend Mabel's calls. Mabel has flown out to New York right before Christmas when Marin is just gonna be staying there on her own in like the dorm room when everyone else has gone home for Christmas. She's flown out to talk to her so that she can't avoid her anymore, basically. It's flashing back and forward in time to like the summer beforehand when obviously something happened. Marin lives with her granddad. Her mum died when she was only about three. And so her relationship with her granddad and her relationship with grief is very much a topic in this book. The book is very much about grief. She's very upset and very angsty and very emotional and, and depressed and has isolated herself. Nina LaCour has such beautiful writing and she sits in sadness and grief so well. Her books sit in this kind of like beautiful sadness, like beautiful melancholy. Colin... Megan. <laughs> Melan... I can't say the word. Mel... I'm sorry. Security! Can you please escort this lady over here out? It won't come out my mouth. Side note, <laughs> no one cares, but if you know, I support a football team called Norwich City and we've signed a player called Josh Sargent. And I can't say Josh Sargent. Like I have to really think about the transition from the sh to the s Anyone else? Let me ask the audience. <laughs> it's cause when I was a kid, I had to go to speech therapy cause I said all my S's like, like, and I can't say Josh 
sergeant i have to really think about it anyway if you like plot driven books don't pick this book up just don't read it like just generally don't read it because it's so character driven and character focused and it's just about like memories and emotions and dealing with them and sitting with them and it's very interesting at the moment i don't feel like it's going to be a five star in the way that watch over me was but i think it's going to be a four star if i had to predict so yeah i am really enjoying it and it's queer as well so if you want some queer representation this book is it. Okay, so I finished. We are okay. And I'm not okay. <laughs> oh, you can see my... The bottom of those socks are dirty. We are going to pretend we didn't see that. Oh! Nina Lacour's books are so heartbreaking. But like, I described Watch Over Me like this as well. They're so quiet. They're so quiet and intimate and contained in their their grief and their hurt and their emotions. I'm gonna give it four stars. It wasn't quite a five star for me. There wasn't anything that was like wrong with it. It just didn't feel like a five star. And it just left me feeling really, really emotional and really, God, I feel, a bit, I feel very drained from reading it. Can you tell? Like I feel like, exhausted from having read this book. I, I did feel like perhaps the reason I'm not gonna give this a five star is that I always felt a little bit removed for what was happening in Marin's life. I felt like with Watch Over Me, you were much more like, in it and absorbed and cl and like every step with the character but this one I felt like we were a spectator to her grief and maybe that's the point but I just felt a bit removed like a step removed like I was always on the outside looking in rather than you know completely absorbed in the story so I don't feel comfortable you guys <laughs> it's late at night and I'm tired so we're gonna hang on let me rearrange myself Oh yeah, that is, that's much better. Just chuck a pillow in for good measure, shall we? Like, I'm not like into working like that. Like, I can do like social media every now and then, but like, I don't wanna like go nine to five job. I'm taking a note out of Emma from Drinking My Shelf, her book. She's done the videos lying down. Honestly, this is the best thing ever. I could just talk to you forever. Reading this book, it's beautiful, but it's sad, it's melancholy, but it's poignant. It's, there's so many things going on. But I feel like the route that this book went down, yeah, was so unexpected to me, but something I really appreciated because it's not a direction that I expected it to go in. I'm now gonna go start Hairpin Bridge. There she is, by Taylor Adams. I am a bit nervous about this because it hasn't gotten as good reviews as No Exit, but I'm hoping I'm gonna enjoy it. To give you a bit of reference <laughs> as to my situation at the moment, Thousand Doors Readathon starts in about three hours. <laughs> Just gotta try and have a PMA. The fuck's a PMA? Positive mental attitude. Get fucked. So obviously I'm doing a separate vlog for that and reading other books. <laughs> But um, this video is supposed to go up on Sunday night. Spoiler alert, it didn't. So I need to read this book and edit this video at some point during the Thousand Doors Readathon. I was intending to have finished this vlog earlier than now, but I'm too far deep to call it off and admit defeat. So we're just gonna continue on and I'll see you later whilst Thousand Doors is happening. That's gonna be a mind fuck to deal with. Oh my God. <laughs> okay, listen. Listen, I'm bored. <laughs> bored shitless! I'm hearing the same conversation over and over and over again! So, in this, basically, Lena's sister, Cambry, killed herself, as well, allegedly. Allegedly, on this bridge a couple months ago. And now Lena has come here to interview the, um, like, state... What's it? Highway Patrolman, who found her body. And we very quickly know, like in No Exit, we very quickly know, like, who the baddie is. We know this guy ain't shit. We know he's behind her sister's death in one way or another. We know that very, like, within 30 pages. It doesn't take an idiot to solve it. Lena is supposedly writing the story of what happened to Cambry, but I find it hard to believe that it's all true because it's in such great detail. And like, how do we really know this? Because of supposedly we're going off the testimony of this guy that I guess we later learn, but I just don't believe it. I don't believe 100% that this is what is actually happening. And both storylines, Lena questioning the patrolman and Cambry um, running away, are like very static. Like, although Cambry is like driving away from him there in, in this like car race, it's just pages of pages of car descriptions, like, car maneuvers to try and get away. 
I'm here to tell you right now, we don't care. Let me tell, right, let me tell you. <laughs> we don't care. And I just don't, I'm not, I don't care. Like, I don't care. Like, I don't care about swerving this way, swerving that way. <laughs> it's the same thing again and again. Lena's storyline in the present day, it's just like, kind of, a standstill, they're just standing off against each other, trying to play this slow game of like chess almost, of who's gonna move first. So I I just don't, I'm just not really vibing with either part of it. Part of what worked so well with No Exit is there was constantly changes, different elements were constantly happening, and this just feels static. It just feels like the same storyline over and over again. Yeah, I don't know. I'm not I'm not really enjoying it. Hopefully it'll get better, but I just kind of want to finish it. I just want it over and done with. I may try and like up the speed a bit on the audiobook whilst I'm reading along, because yeah, it's just like not it's not really doing it for me right now. And I'm really sad because I loved No Exit so much. I'm still gonna try out Taylor Adams' other books. I have the audiobooks of him on script, so they're free. It's just not, it's just not, it's just not giving what it was supposed to give. But it did not give what needed to be gave. Let's talk about it. I don't want to. Um, <laughs> I'm gonna give it 2.5 stars. I'm gonna give it 2.5 stars. This was really disappointing for me. It, it just didn't have the right pacing. It felt a bit like an idea uncooked. It feels like the idea of no exit, just not done as well. <laughs> I had to really force myself through it. Thank God I had the audiobook, because otherwise it would have been even more of a struggle. Like I would have found it even harder to get through. On the whole, it just wasn't great. It just wasn't good because it didn't have the same pacing that NoX it has. It wants to be this bitch. It wants to be this bitch, but it's not. You can come down the runway and look like you've stepped off a Rodeo Drive like a goddamn supermodel. I will never look like that. True. You'll never be glam. Because that one is just constantly like the pace, you're constantly stressed. There's too much standing around talking in this. And I didn't think the descriptions of the action, like I said, were very good. So I'm very sad because, you know, No Exit takes pride of place as one of my favorite thrillers of all time. And then this? No, sir. No. I'm sorry. I wanted to love it and I kept wanting more, but it was a slog to get through. It felt like punishment a little bit. So we started off amazingly with the project. <laughs> I literally just read the last two pages of this again and I cried again. So I can't stop thinking about it. I don't understand why everyone didn't like this. I'm gonna lend it to my mum so she can suffer through the pain with me. <laughs> then we had a four star. I still really loved this. I'm glad I read it. I'm excited to read more Nina Lacour in the future. And then we had a 2.5 star. So. No Exit is literally the perfect thriller. There are no faults. It's perfection. So I know that this man can do it, but this wasn't it. And yeah, really excited to dive into more of Courtney Summers' backlist. Really, really excited. I will never refer to these authors as one hit wonder authors. Evidently, these two I loved. I won't refer to Mr. Taylor Adams as a one hit wonder author for me because I'm hoping for better things again, but this one really wasn't it and I don't understand why. But I hope you enjoyed this video. Let me know what authors you've read, like, one book from and they've been five stars and you've never read another book and you're maybe a bit scared like I was to read from them again and if you've gotten to the end of this video comment a sea wave emoji for we are okay and thank you so much for watching I'll see you very soon in another video bye